So Governor Cuomo today launched his Broadband for All campaign to ensure access to high-speed internet for New Yorkers by the year 2019. That's all New Yorkers. The $1 billion plan would be funded partly about half by the state and then private sector companies would pick up the other half of the cost. This is something that rural areas are particularly interested in. Rachel Hout is the chief digital officer of the Cuomo administration. She's actually the very first deputy secretary for technology ever uh, for the state. And she's joining me now from New York City to talk more about this initiative. Rachel, thanks for being here. Thank you for having me, Liz. Um, so just the, the mere fact that the governor hired you away from the Bloomberg administration toward the end of the former mayor's uh, tenure demonstrates that he is, in fact, uh, very interested in technology and really believes in the future of technology and how it's tied to economic development, um, despite the fact that just today he said that he's still working on his own tech-savvy abilities. <laughs> The governor is incredibly committed to supporting the innovative future of this state, and rightfully so, because it's such a huge driver for economic development and job growth. So it, it's very clear, and it's really exciting to be a part of pursuing his, his vision on that front. The $500 million that I mentioned for this broadband initiative is actually coming from the $5.4 billion and growing uh, pot of settlement fund money that everybody seems to have an idea about how to spend. Um, why is this so crucial that we would spend this sort of one-time only infusion of cash on it instead of, say, infrastructure, which is where so many others think this money should go? The Broadband for All campaign is highlighting the new New York broadband program, which is infrastructure. This is technology infrastructure that is absolutely on par with historic developments and breakthroughs like running water, the interstate highway system, and electricity. And it is going to have such a critical impact on our state both today and for generations to come. So it's arguable uh, that that truly this is an infrastructure investment and it is the defining infrastructure challenge of our age. There's actually more than 5.4 million New Yorkers who don't have broadband access and we should maybe even define that for people because I'm not sure that everybody knows maybe you know I'm, I'm presuming here but let's let's <coughs> just make sure that everybody knows what we're talking about. Absolutely. So the broadband program would provide uh, internet access rates of a minimum of 100 megabits per second. And at this rate, currently, the numbers are even greater for individuals and businesses who are missing access. Today, more than 7 million New Yorkers don't have access at 100 megabits per second. That's more than 35% of the population and more than 100,000 businesses. Now today, experts say that you need a connection of at least one gigabit per second to really sustain economic growth. So mm -hmm. clearly New York will be at a disadvantage. Already we're not currently in the top 10 if you're ranking connection speeds and access and penetration of, of high speed uh, broadband. And we simply have no choice. If we want to ensure the economic, ac academic, health, safety, um, and overall quality of life for future generations of New Yorkers, now is the time to make this investment. This sector, though, is making such rapid advancement. I mean, what can we do to be sure that this money is well spent with an eye towards whatever is going to happen five years, 10 years, 20 years down the road, and that $500 million isn't going to become obsolete in a short period of time? Absolutely. And that consideration is really key to the thinking that's gone into this. The state has a dedicated broadband program office that has been exploring this and really studying the challenges. The way that the funding will be administered, and it's $500 million that's coming from those one-time bank settlements that will be matched by at least $500 million in value and contribution contributions from the private sector. So already we're getting that incredible value there. And then the way that it will be administered and invested in the community is through a very community-driven, local, 
um, driven approach through the Regional Economic Development Council. So this has worked really well so far for Connect New York, the governor's existing broadband program, which mm. to date has already invested more in New York's infrastructure than any other state in the country. And we believe that by partnering with local community leaders, business leaders, that we'll really be able to identify where the, the greatest return on this investment will be. Can you sort of expand on that local piece? Because this is not like, you know, your traditional infrastructure. I mean, that can be controversial, particularly when you talk about, say, building power lines, for example. I mean, when you're talking about broadband, will there be a piece where people will have a say about where technology should go? And is it going to be invasive, for lack of a better word? I mean, what do you have to lay down in the ground, if anything? Absolutely. So. There are a range of policies first that we can implement to make this um, as, as uh, smooth as possible in terms of deployment. We don't want this to be disruptive and there's already a range of policies and programs that are really best practices. So things like a dig once approach, which means that when you are engaging in ongoing construction and other public works, you will couple that with the laying of fiber optic lines. Mm. And that means that you're not inconveniencing the public twice, you're also cutting costs. So you're reducing costs um, in multiple ways for the private sector, and you're also reducing the inconvenience for the public. And these are the kinds of thoughtful, smart policies that we can pursue, but we'll pursue them in, in conjunction with the community leaders. The whole goal and the whole uh, mission behind working with the Regional Economic Development Councils is that we have that community representation that will play an active role in making sure that these investments and these projects are happening where they're most needed. So what you're talking about here is laying down sort of brick and mortar, or in this case cable, fiber optic cable infrastructure to enable hookups at the end. So you're not talking about providing service per se. In other words, whatever the FCC is talking about in terms of net neutrality now is not going to impact any aspect of this program. This program is focused on facilitating the private sector making those infrastructure investments actual physical construction and ensuring that those investments and the, and the speeds and the bit rates at which we're connecting the public have a minimum of 100 megabits per second. And not to get too technical, but this is what we've identified as really the bare minimum for ensuring future growth. And that's why we've, we've, we've decided to take this approach. In certain um, exceptional cases, the program will allow remote areas to connect at speeds of 25 megabits per second. But overall, the bottom line is that these are the speeds that we need to sustain economic development, to support growing technologies like telemedicine, which enables quality health care to people who may be living in remote areas, to support education. Education is being transformed by the internet and by digital technologies. And all of these things are not possible, and thus our success as a state is not possible if we don't have the broadband infrastructure to back it up. Is 100 um, megabits per second actually fast enough? And do we have the capacity to increase that? I mean, once you put that stuff in, you don't have to be digging it up and improving it 10 years down the road. Absolutely. The bare minimum that we're requiring is 100, but that can be expandable to at least 500, and in many cases, a gigabit. And Many experts have said that a gigabit is what's necessary to support sustainable economic development, and that that's really what we're aiming for. And at the same time, we have to balance that against what's feasible and what makes sense uh, from a strategic and economic development standpoint. Uh, so we're going to run out of time soon, but I also want people to know, I mean, I, I, you are sort of the person behind, if anybody's been on the state website lately, an overhaul and modernization of the entire state website, ny.gov, and an upgrading of that, um, which is something that you also did for New York City. So if anybody is, has seen it, it is way more interactive. I think you're also behind the governor's Instagram account, is that correct? Absolutely. Well, of course, there's a there's a wonderful, passionate, hardworking team of people who maintain and support all of the governor's social media accounts, um, as well as the executive chamber accounts. The state's website was really the priority that Governor Cuomo outlined when I joined his administration, and he had the vision to say, first, it hadn't been updated for 15 years, and it was time to switch it from this agency-centric, government-centric perspective on services 
to a fully citizen-centric view. And that's really what we hope we've achieved. The response has been great, but we can always do more, so we're gonna continue to improve on that. But yes, social media and digital media are transforming the way that we serve New Yorkers, and it's, it's very exciting. So it's a team-driven approach, so the governor's not tweeting his own tweets. <laughs> the governor is not tweeting his own tweets, but we are engaging with hundreds of thousands of people, and we would encourage, if you're watching, you can follow him at at NYGovCuomo, and you can also follow and like on Facebook, Instagram, Vine, a range of channels. Um, we're very strategic. We identify the social media platforms where New Yorkers are engaging the most, and we work backwards to see how we can best inform, engage, and serve them through those different channels. But it's, it's an active group, and it's totally transforming the way that we serve the public. Today, through the state's social media channels, we have more than 285 social media channels. We reach nearly 5 million New Yorkers. Well, it's a good thing that we're linked up with you then, because when you guys retweet us, so are we. Um, just just uh, my last question, I know it's a little bit out of your wheelhouse, but we've been having a lot of discussions about emails, email storage capacity, email policy. The governor's having this summit to have uh, email and FOIL be sort of um, un uh, uniform across all of the statewide offices and the legislature. I in terms of the capacity, I mean, does in fact the state at this point have the capacity to store emails at least up to seven years, if not longer? As you noted, Liz, the, the policies were put in place in 2007, and given that there's so much interest in revisiting them, the governor is looking forward to convening members of the legislature and other elected officials to revisit this and come up with a policy that works for everyone. And that's a really exciting step forward, and, and we'll, we'll be looking forward to that in the coming weeks. Uh, so are we. We'll be covering it, of course. And Rachel Hout, I thank you so much for your time. And if people have not checked out all of the online goodies that you guys have, they really should because it has expanded dramatically in recent years. So we hope to see you again. Thanks thank very you. much for your time this evening. Thanks for having me. My pleasure.